Welcome back to another episode of Contender Pretenders. Inside the Eminence Promotions Cage, Mobile, Alabama, we're running another show for you guys. As you can see, we got our third wheel back. Crash Dummy Cully Long and Blake. Blake Crash Dummy Cully Long and Big D David Falcone. Oh, uh, what's up, guys? <laughs> Anything to make Blake laugh. Yeah, that was on purpose. We'll, we'll believe that. <laughs> Uh, so how's everybody feeling today? Are you doing good? Yeah, you know, I got up at 7.30. Actually, a little before 7.30. I got 7, 7 I'm very surprised that's early for you. That Being that you have five kids, you got to get ready for school. They yeah, you think he gets I, those I kids ready for school? Back to bed. <laughs> they get their own asses up. They get their own. They get dressed themselves. And then they get on the bus. They're Blake. old enough. I'm out of that part. <laughs> How you feeling today, Blake? Yeah. Yeah. Blake looks like he needs some beer and sushi. We did go from blah this morning, it was blah, the text message to eh. So I guess that's an improvement. Oh, you God. know. <laughs> oh, guys. So let's see. We've got a lot to recap. We have Christmas, New Year's. Christmas, New Year's. We did not do the turducken. Didn't do that. It's on the, the to-do list. It is. Uh, we have a <laughs> so, Kurt, let's go with how it's holidays. It was good, man. It was good. Uh, you got your kids a dangerous motorbike for Christmas? Yeah, that I've already seen. <laughs> had a couple heart attacks, got a couple more gray hairs, yeah. but it's been fun. They've been enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. good time to be a kid. You are getting your cardio in because I see you chasing around the Raiden for well, sure. Let me tell you, he so just took off. Yesterday, we took him to an actual motocross track, right? Little track that we found right by my house. Raiden is the most fearless kid you'll ever meet. He don't care. He just wants to get on and go. He don't care if it's up, down. He will go wide open. I ran the entire track after him yesterday. The entire track. Has he had a spill yet on it? He had one little wipeout, but it wasn't nothing crazy. Yesterday on the track, and we got some videos on, on my Facebook and stuff. Man, I mean, this is a huge track. And he shows up and down the hills. It was a little muddy, and his bike does have some trainer wheels on it. So it's a couple of the thick spots. His bike would stall out, and the tra the white tire just spin because the trailer wheels were on the ground, and the bike was a little higher. But man, I would have to push him off. And as soon as I push him, he's going. I'm <laughs> back and running up and down hill, fearless. But man, I'm that that's the first thing he wants to do when he wakes up. Hop on the bike and go. Hop on the bike and go. So that was the head of the Christmas gifts, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I remember when I was a young kid. I got like my first dirt bike and I, it was such a blast. And I didn't even have a lot of places to ride it. You know, in my house, we got 20 acres, which is not cleared, but I got some good spots, some good trails around my woods. And uh, yeah, I mean, they've been tearing, tearing yard up. Hmm. Scaring the animals, animals cool with it. Yeah, nah. animals, they're, they're always pretty cool with it. They're, they're yeah. just uh, loud noises and stuff. Gotcha. My yard's not, now my yard's turned into a damn dirt bike track. <laughs> Yeah. So Blake, how are your holidays? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't do much. I edit some stuff for y'all's podcast. For our podcast? Yeah, for y'all's podcast. I, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Edited your Grinch video. Made hmm. Big D a new shirt. I did like the shirt. I'm yeah, a little biased, so, though. So what you, would you think about my uh, Santa versus Grinch wrestling match? Pretty good, though, right? It was all right. You man. think I got a shot for WWE? Mm hmm a little bit. <laughs> you can't can't be playing really copyrighted music though. I had to make. Well, I seen. I that. had to I make fake that. music to go over your other music. Oh, that was cool. I figured. I figured that. <laughs> you, you figured that. <laughs> well, you knew. I, I figured when I heard it, when I watched it, I heard the music. I figured that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Was cool. Like I said, I mean, I w I would like to. I I did watch the video. <laughs> there was a lot of the part of the match that I missed by being knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> Why you, why you didn't move? Well, I didn't, uh, I guess I thought Santa would take the hit for me, and Santa did not. Santa, Santa wasn't helping me out, huh? Oh, what? Yeah. yeah, and then Santa would hit the referee, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Santa, Santa <laughs> came to town, <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> he did. On you. <laughs> yeah, and then we said so we had the Grinch and the Grunch in there. <laughs> the Grinch and Grunch. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Jeremy was probably the funniest part, besides Raiden coming in, but Jeremy... When you went uh, down and like we they put the chair in the corner, you're like Jeremy's like, We got something for Santa. So he hit the chair, we got something for Santa. 
<laughs> I think the, then the kids interfered and twice. tried to steal I, I mean, the chair. I don't even tell how it's not part of the script. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we had this chair that you know the gr the grunch on the outside was gonna grab the chair, bring it in. <laughs> And then as I take said chair from the Grinch, the kid had already taken it from the Grinch and pulled it back. But the thing I think I, that didn't get caught on camera was later on, whenever I was uh, knocked out of the match, the one of the older gentlemen who was standing on the outside right there, either as a really big wrestling fan or thought they were going to really take it to Santa, because then he tried to take the chair. <laughs> like, he didn't get there. was supposed to be in the match either. This was a 50-year-old man. Just <laughs> and won't y'all... Jeremy had to wrestle the chair with the kid. They don't oh, no, he did. By the way, if anybody's curious and wants to watch, go check out our YouTube channel, The Contenders and Pretenders. The whole wrestling match is uploaded. Go check it out. Yeah. And next time, if you are there watching, please don't interfere in the match. <laughs> Especially if you're 50 years old. <laughs> you should know better. <laughs> you should know better. But no. But those chairs really do dip. <laughs> we did the chair up a little bit. Yeah, the one thing I will give is the crowd. Yeah, I don't know if it came through on the video, like the crowd noise as much because I never got to watch it with full volume to it yet. I, mean, I watched the video, but I had to. Uh, I they were definitely the, cheering. Yeah, the, the yeah. Once uh, I had to, I had to turn it down a little <laughs> bit because of the uh, when the music, you know, mm -hmm. I faded in the music kind of together with it because it had the other music. Um, but yeah. You you could you could hear it. That was definitely, especially like during the other music when the music was playing when they first came out, it was really it was really loud. But because I play that other music over it, you may not get fully all of that until the music's over with. But um, yeah, it was it was pretty loud. And also, guys, just we didn't address we did say we were in the cage at the Eminence promotion show they're still setting up so there's some background that noise you don't usually hear um yeah there's, there's all a, kinds. a lot of shit going on with uh, chairs tables uh, forklift forklifts it's <laughs> everything so hopefully the sound isn't too bad um if it is don't uh text kurt and tell him that his sound guy sucks <laughs> well because it's not my fucking fault it's still cool though I'm also a uh, fun cool. fact i learned is um we can say fuck um just not in like the first 10 seconds once we're worried about monetization, you know, I've been studying a little bit. So I could say fuck like there's almost as many times hey, I want to say fuck. <laughs> there's no kids there's here. Kids listening. There's, <laughs> I, there's not. I click no kids listen okay. on the thing. The best. <laughs> yeah. The best part about it, I didn't I didn't know how true that was. But a podcast I listen to mm -hmm. always jokes about that, that we can't mention. Uh, fuck dicks. <laughs> Anything, anything in the first 10 yeah. to 20 seconds or they get pulled from YouTube. There's also some new uh, monetization rules that just came out that I learned about. <coughs> so initially, you couldn't really do anything through YouTube money-wise until you got to 1,000 subscribers. But now there's some other things where, like, people can tip you. Like, that always existed, but it was all part of the 1,000 subscribers. So I think there's some ad revenue you can't really get until you got 1,000, but... Now they've changed it to 500. So yeah. at 500 subscribers, we yeah. can now have like, if somebody wants to tip us or there's other little things you can do monetization wise. I'm not sure of all the details, yeah. but we're almost there. Uh, over the over the break, we got over a hundred new subscribers. We had a big jump. Me, uh, Blake made a very heartfelt and very good post. Suckers. That I then what would be good copy? Job, I copyright yeah, it. So what would it be? Uh, he, he, he turned it. He turned it into a chain letter. <laughs> I edited stuff. <laughs> Took out a whole paragraph there. <laughs> Took off paragraph. Added a little couple sentences. I'm like, oh, now I'm it's a chain you letter. Guys. You guys did a good job. <laughs> That's how I passed most of my school subjects. Was borrowing someone's paper. Yeah, yeah. Kurt it. didn't post it, right? <laughs> Kurt yeah. shared it. Oh, okay. He just share it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I made a flyer for tonight, you know. Kurt and Kurt did share that. Yeah, I shared it. I yeah, you, you made sure you did. <laughs> I made a post. I got my checklist has been. I changed off. Eminence logo. Hopefully, you know, <laughs> no one hears me. <laughs> the lion just looks different. I changed the lion. Don't say nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm not. But if they watch the podcast, they're gonna notice. Oh, they didn't wow. notice when they read the flyer. You know what? What? We just got Blake one step closer to where he's actually now stepped into the cage. One step closer. That's true. 
Is your no, first look, time being no. in a cage? <laughs> look, we can all three probably not. been in the MMA cage. I've probably been in an MMA cage. You have never been not in like an MMA a, cage. Not like a dungeon cage. I've <laughs> been in an MMA Actual cage for a regulated I'm, MMA clay cage. Okay, right. then you hadn't either. Because I'm pretty sure I've been standing in one with you before after you won a fight. I went to a lot of your fights over the years there. But you stepped into the cage? Pretty sure at least once. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, now, now it's a little bit newer. But now, now we got one step closer to you actually getting into the cage, right? Spending yeah, time feeling yeah. the grip. Yeah, yeah right. sure, sure. You're only 700 subscribers away from that. <laughs> Listen, yeah, we've already me. changed it to a wrestling match. Rest, we, we, no, we changed it to a wrestling match. Uh, and uh, well, I and I, I'm going to set Kurt on fire. He's... He's uh, we were gonna he's really it. earning this hardcore wrestling match. I'll pass on that. Throw me to a table if you want. But yeah, it's gonna be on fire. on fire. It's gonna be on That's fire. Fine. I'll do yeah. that. And then I'm gonna set myself on fire. Throw gasoline on you first. <laughs> By the way, did you, did you see the uh, AEW where Adam Copeland lit the table on fire? I didn't watch the whole match, but I did see the clip. Well, I seen the clip where he set the table on fire. Yeah, yeah. But he, he powerbombed the guy off the ring, but he, like, completely missed the table. Yeah. I wonder if that was – did he mean to miss the table? I, I don't, you, I I don't, it's much I don't think so. It's a much harder fall if you don't hit that table. So I'm sure the guy yeah, was hoping he hit the table. Like, he, <laughs> yeah, he yeah, no. Like the edge of the table. Like the, he lit the table on fire. So the table was burning. And he powerbombed. He just kind of went over the table. Didn't really hit the table. Yeah. Nah, I'm pretty sure that was That's not the plan. <laughs> So yeah, what, so that whole story with the uh, AW storyline where he became the devil, you said you pretty much predicted that from the start. Wait, uh, who became the devil? That was not Adam Copeland. That was uh, Adam Edge. Cole. Oh yeah, my, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah say Edge. Edge. For I don't use his real name like you know him. <coughs> I don't care what well, AEW does. Yeah, he's talking about it. Yeah, he's okay. talking about yeah, Edge. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, the Adam Cole thing I predicted from the beginning, but most people, it made the most sense. Nothing else really. Would have made sense. They could have shoehorned somebody in there. Could have been Bray Wyatt. Or Fish. or Chris Benoit. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, there's not a, just could, a good of chance. Kevin Sullivan. Demonetized. <laughs> even though we're not monetized, monetized yet. So we're good. But yeah. So everybody looks very thrilled right now. <laughs> you know. Hey, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm about to get some sushi, man. I'm you ain't got time for sushi? Good. No, I have time for nothing. You better get ready with your interview questions. You're not today. eating today. I got it. You got interview questions. You got to get ready. I know. <laughs> you gonna be the Joe Rogan of the thing got tonight? Got under the bus a little bit, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I see you say throw under the bus, but I feel like when because you're not the best at relaying information, sometimes you have a little faulty thing with that. I can almost guarantee you, he probably mentioned you were gonna do nope. that. You just assumed you were gonna be. I don't know what you assumed you were doing because originally you, you were commentating. Then you're gonna be. Then you're gonna be a guest commentator. Well, that's the thing. I just then, wanna, like because I do got some guys on the card, so I just figure I'll be in and out the commentary booth a little bit. I'll sit down for a couple of fights, but the primary announcers are gonna be you and Preston. With guests coming in throughout the thing, potentially. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> if you come in, I think and now, now I'll be interviewing the fighters in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> By the time this comes out, this all already happened. True, <laughs> but it is. Yeah. But yeah. But you can catch it on the Eminence YouTube page. Yeah. Like I said, I am. I mean, I think it's actually going to be fun. Kind of looking forward no, to cool, the uh, commentating aspect of it. Hey, you man, know. you better be on your A game. I'm going to do my best. No, nah, I feel like we just need to focus on getting you that fight while we're here. That was disg- <laughs> that was disgusting. Them out. They got two. They it do was on have, that podcast. I wasn't allowed. They, on. they have two heavyweights on the card tonight. That Kurt's gonna. We're gonna scope. Are they amateur or pro? Amateur. Okay. I think there is. There's a few pro fights because I know Cam Teague is pro. So the main event is no, definitely I mean, a pro fight. But he's not heavyweight. He's, no, he's not yeah, about to say I'm talking heavy. <laughs> two light heavyweight and heavyweights are pretty much where I'm looking at Kurt. I'm not yeah, uh, yeah, going no, through. I got that. you. I got you. I Super heavyweight. That's over 265. He's super what if we can find a super heavyweight, but he's your height? Hey, I guess so, I could, so wait, <laughs> you, want two, you want a super heavyweight? No. I'd have to, Blake? I'd, I'd have to bulk. No. That'd be no. a... Uh, you going to drop some weight, Blake? What, what you coming down to? I think that'd be the first time ever if I had that happen. If we did go super heavyweight route. I've always been working on losing weight. Never tried to intentionally gain weight. It just has happened over the years. 
don't know how that would go. I would say, man, that you would still probably have the best cardio of any big man. You know, you go, you work on your cardio pretty regularly. I think that that would be a surprising thing for anybody that had to deal with you. I think your cardio. I think for sure it's super heavyweight. I'd have a. On a, for sure, super heavyweight would be un. un yeah, <laughs> about the first round and, yeah, just. Uh, I mean, I think even with I mean, you, you're always gonna have the height disadvantage, but I still feel like with a lot of heavyweights, depending on how experienced they are, you're probably still gonna have better cardio yeah. than most of them. Very possible. I, I the big thing is, I, but I realize like people are like, oh, but you're gonna be short. I'm like, dude, the way MMA is now, I'd be height disadvantage if I was at. 155 for the most part. Yeah. And even your 55ers now, I mean, the only weight class thing you got like five, five to five, six guys is 45 and under. Pretty much bulk. I mean, there's mm -hmm. not many of them. Some of them are damn 5'10 somehow at like 135. That might be Kurt's nope. next weight class. Nope. <laughs> I'll pass. Do you keep running around that track with Rayton? You might uh, drop that weight. I'm good. It's, then I'll, I wouldn't have to cut much for a 55. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little big right now, man. I got to start getting this weight down. Now, I'm in the perfect position. I'm right where I want to be. I'm fitting into my lightweight frame. Yeah. <laughs> I did actually have a question. I thought about it over the holidays for you, Kurt. What you and got I was going to gonna ask you and give you time to think on it, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay, great. You have to give up one. Okay. Either you can either only drink beer one time a year, mm -hmm. or you can never cook anything for yourself again. Mm. You enjoy cooking as well, like when you have the time. Yeah. You can only, that sucks. You can only cook for yourself one time a year as well. I would probably have to give up beer. I feel like he really doesn't drink beer anyway. So, you know, like. That's. I don't. <laughs> I didn't think he drank beer as much as I thought he did until I went to his house. <laughs> I mean, but I think when he drinks, he drinks like a beer or something, maybe two. I feel like he doesn't drink. No, he's not. Yeah, not going out type drinking. Yeah. But it's still a relaxing. Faster. Yeah, it's a, but it's like he does it as a relaxation into the day, <coughs> crack a beer open, sip. Well, I'm I just saying. a six pack pretty easily by myself. Well, then we're getting into the territory a little bit higher than the one to two ratio. I, 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 I drink 12. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. I'm just saying, though, for you, though, good to give up the one. So you're going to go give up beer yeah, over food? Because, first off, you could just make Brie. You could have Brie cook for you. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> then again, that. First off, when you say that, that probably eliminates me boiling crawfish. Yep. I already thought about that. <laughs> I like to boil crawfish. I like, but see, I like to drink beer, but I'm going to go Does liquor count? I'm about to go start drinking liquor. No, I just because I'm going to switch to liquor. Just because how much I know you hate liquor, I'll allow you to drink liquor. <laughs> just for that yeah, reason. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. But actually, look, I, I, I can survive because I can do a frozen margarita. I can survive off frozen margaritas. So, and then if it's super duper hot, well, yeah, when it's super duper hot, frozen margarita for sure, but. If it's cold and it's too cold or something, I'll drink a regular mar margarita on ice on the rocks. Yeah. I just. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I would have to get the beer up. I just. I, I would, like cooking crawfish too much. I, I would have like picked wrong on that, honestly, I will say. I would have said you would have get up cooking and just maybe walk Bree through all the steps. Well, yeah. I'm doing it. Walk everybody through. They still might not do it right, so I, I need to get on there. Lord have mercy. Come on. I, I, so I, we're going to uh, we gonna talk about Connor. Uh, that is true. Finally got official. Did you forget about that? But did the UFC? They did. Well, it still needs to be talked about. Did the whether UFC it's... make it official is what I want to know. I don't know if the 185 thing is going to be official, but I think I, don't think so. I, think, I think the, ma the sure, matchup but, is official. Yeah, I think it'll be 170 for sure. But uh, I mean, I hope it's true. I mean, no, I mean, it's. I think the UFC actually has came out and said the fight will happen. I just don't think they ever committed to the yeah, I mean, weight class that Conor dictated. Has not, has not put anything out there. That's the thing. But as soon as Conor announced it, I got my ESPN alerts. And then every other MMA out, outlook or journalist have posted it. So I think it's going to be legit. Hopefully it is. I think that's the right time. Everybody thought it was going to be at UFC 300. But International Fight Week's always a really big, big card. card. You know, it's, and... Uh, so, so many people is there for that international fight week. So, yeah. it's going to be big. One other question is the 85 thing. I mean, yeah, I, I truly, if that was to actually happen, that's – 70s already a class they haven't fought in. Mm -hmm. Middleweight's a whole different <laughs> – So, yeah, that's, and here's the thing, too. Can I see it being an 85 just for the sole purpose of Connor being able to fight four different weight classes? Yes. But do I think it's going to be 85? No, I think it's going to be 170. 
I, I mean, I agree with that. Unless he really sticks to his gun and says, the only way I'm doing this mm-hmm. is 85, the, yeah. the UFC I mean, will if say that, yeah. If that's the case, then, then I definitely think so. But y'all don't think it's just not going to happen. I, I still feel like yeah, <sighs> just him talking shit, trying to get his. Here's what I'll say. I think for sure Connor fights this year. Yeah. I do have a very inkling that I think Chandler gets snubbed in the sense. Really? So you don't think he fights Chandler? I don't. I hope he does. I, I mean, I hope one. I hope Chandler gets that fight, would, trying to I wait mean, it you out. You would think, you know, as long as Chandler's held out, and then he doesn't get to fight Connor, that's gonna suck. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, at the end of the day, I I, I want the fight for Chandler because you have the Ultimate Fighter, you know, history. He's waited this long. There's no doubt, Connor. If he knew that fight was off the table, he would have taken a fight. <coughs> I believe by this point already. Yeah, I think so too. So, I, I just think that. I think McGregor's going to pick – I don't know who yet. I think it's going to be a decent name, but I think it's going to be someone – Well, it's got to be – I mean, I, there's only going to be so many. It's going to be Dustin Poirier again, or it's going to be Nate Diaz. I still lean towards Nate Diaz. It's my – if I, I think Conor fights this year, I think it's Nate Diaz trilogy. That I, I think, unfortunately, Chandler's going to get snubbed in that fight. Because right now Nate is not signed to the UFC, but – He hasn't signed anywhere. That will be – yeah, and I mean, he can go anywhere and make – a lot of money, you know. But I think that would be probably his biggest payday. Yeah. He's fighting Connor for a third time. Well, we don't know. I, I guess I really we don't know the true numbers of what the Jake Paul thing did. Because, I mean, somebody – I heard read something. I think maybe – I mean, you talked about it. Mm-hmm. That he may have walked away with $15 million from that fight? From the Jake Paul boxing matchup? Yeah, something like that. So, I don't know if that would – I don't know if UFC would allow him to make more than that from Connor or not, in a sense. But – off of pay-per-view buy and all of this and all of that, he might. Yeah. You never know because they, they don't tell you. Most of the time they disclose the contract, but they don't tell you what you're getting off pay-per-view or anything like that. So what would be, okay, so your, what would be your thoughts here? Would you prefer, if you had to pick Connor's fight if, as a fan, as a more casual fan of the sport, would it be Diaz, Poirier, or Chandler? I mean, if I hadn't watched The Ultimate Fighter and all of that, I don't know. As like a casual fan that didn't know much about Michael Chandler before him, um, probably DS. But I did watch The Ultimate Fighter, and so now I, I feel like that when you do shit like that, it should have a conclusion. You shouldn't you shouldn't tease something and not give it to people. Yeah, I, that's that's how I feel about it, just in general. So I hope it's Chandler for sure. Yeah. I don't know. So my, but I was surprised by the betting odds of that. Did you see the odds release? Oh, it's close. It's close, but I thought, without a doubt in my mind, Connor would be underdog. Yeah, oh. not fighting. I mean, I get the popularity yeah, side of him, uh, but first off, he mentioned a weight class at middleweight, which neither one have ever fought at. But you got to think if you know McGregor is fighting at fifty-five, at forty-five, he's really always been a one to two round fighter. He doesn't have. I mean, he's went decision a couple of times and didn't look great in those third round, that later mm-hmm. rounds. He's so now you're gonna carry extra weight, and then against a guy who does nothing but pretty much eat, sleep, and breathe training, carrying the extra weight. Do you think he gets out of one round with decent cardio? I don't. I don't. I mean, I, to me, from my odds maker's perspective, I want to go ahead and if I had the if I had the <laughs> extra money to lay right now, I'd lay. I'd lay anything that I could on Chandler at underdog yeah. odds. I really would. I was there. I thought it'd be the opposite. I knew it was going to be close, but I thought Chandler would have been a minus 120 and then the plus 110, 115 from McGregor. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how those numbers move. Up. Yeah, because the lines can always shift. Now, I'm not saying if you told me three months <laughs> from now, McGregor's now in the favor because fans were betting more on McGregor. I could see that. I didn't think the initial odds were going to be that way. Personally, I was surprised by that. But if the 185 thing happens, I think Chandler's – I mean, he walks around probably, what, 190 probably? Well, if he's 190, not. maybe something. It depends. He might, you know, hit a few pounds over. But for the most part, I mean, he's just a stocky, heavy dude. Yeah. You know, and a point that uh, Chandler actually brought up when we got the, when was on the, in the house is we were talking about it a little bit, and he was like, you know, I've been this weight my entire career. He's like, Connor just put all this weight on. He don't know how he's really – he don't really know how he's going to be able to react or how he's going to feel 
fighting at a weight class and at a weight that he's never fought at. Yeah. You know, so he's like, so we'll, we'll see how that's going to go. But he said, as far as the weight things, like I've been at this weight my entire life. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say this. If it does actually stick to the 185, I'll go say Chandler second round TKO. I like it. I think pretty much a given. I don't see McGregor having the continuing to be able to continue in the second round with any level of cardio. Yeah, I think it just all depends. You know, um, I mean everybody know, everybody knows how tough Chandler is. Everybody's seen him in the war with Gaethje. He's seen him in all the wars. Yeah. Which, just saying that, it's just crazy to know he had the war with Poye, war with Gaethje, the war with Alvarez from the Bellator day. And the way that Oliveira was able to actually, <coughs> it just, you don't think of Oliveira as this power guy. And he's not a power puncher from the looks, but he right. just carries some kind of deadly force in his hands. Mm-hmm. But, uh, he, he can crack it. And really, I think that might be one of the only guys that really hurt Chandler on the feet like that. Yeah. So, on other news, I did see, and it wasn't from UFC officially, and maybe you're not going to want to talk about it. Is this the it. internet rumor? I was about did to bring it up, Did you hear the internet too. rumor about you being pitched on a fight guard from a fan oh. or a fan or MMA site? Well, did. yeah, it was, uh, so, and, and they've done this before, but the first time they'd done it, uh, and I don't think it was the same site, or I think it was a different site, but supposedly there was a little bit of truth to the first time, like, because he, here's what I'm saying is you never know who's getting a peak or what kind of resources somebody knows that is getting a look in that war room, right? Because UFC has the war room with all of the boards for all of the cards up. All it takes is for a little photo leak or somebody to go in there or talk to somebody and, and say a little something. And that's how these guys get their info, you know? So it wouldn't surprise me, but it's the matchup that I've already kind of looked at and I've already thought that, you know, this is a very big possibility. This is a guy the UFC can match me up with, and that's Vince Pichel, a um, guy that's been in the UFC for quite a while now. Actually was on the Ultimate okay. Fighter season live. The live season, yeah. Yeah, that's okay, the that season is, I tried out for also. So, uh, and he lost to Al Alaquinta on the show, and Al Alaquinta went on to fight Michael Chiesa for the finale. So, tough guy, a um, little bit older. I think he's like 41 or something like that. So he, he's right up there in, in age with me, so I can see that fight definitely being made by the UFC. Yeah. But as of now, it's just a rumor that have all yeah, offered you the fight or anything. Anytime somebody's going to post something, I'm just going to throw it out there and let people think what they want to think. I mean, yeah. I would like it to be true just to be able to get on a card. Um, I would like to be a little bit higher up on a card, but I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, just yeah, just ready to get a fight and – what was the date they put out there for? Oh, was that was going to be the April twenty seventh on uh, Minnesota. Hmm. Okay. Hey, you're our Jamie over there. What was what was the card over there? Was it Minnesota? <laughs> Minneapolis. Yeah, it was Minneapolis. Minneapolis Minnesota. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I knew it was Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so man, it could be a cool card, and I think they're expecting that card to be headlined by. Uh, Umar and Megamedov and Corey Sanhagen. So, they had a couple of decent fights on the card. Also, um, shoot, a guy that I fought, Tiago Moises, was supposedly rumored on that card, too, against another uh, pretty good lightweight. Can't remember who it was right off my head. But. One of the UFC ever sees these rumors, and they're like, you know what? That kind of makes yeah. sense. It's kind of better than what we were thinking. We're just going to take that and run with it. <laughs> yeah, and, and like I said, man, I don't know – and they don't always put, like, cards out. There's not, like, they're guessing. But this is, like, the second one that I ended up on. And, like I said, you know, I hit up to my management, and we talk a little bit, and they're like, yeah, well, actually, um, they were talking about putting Nick Lentz, who I was matched up with the first time, apparently on the on the site that they put it out. And they were like, uh, I think Kurt's name was tossed around on it. So you never know, man. They, they could put names and take them down every day, shift them around until they get what they like. But you never know. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, whatever date the UFC gives you is going to work. You're going to, but would April be, would you prefer March, February? Or you, it's April work for um, your schedule right now. Like, I mean, it does, you know, because, you know, heal some little injuries that I have, maybe, and, you know, keep training, keep getting better in, in some of the aspects of the game. But I think any one of those timelines will work. And I even reached out to my management just to ask them, hey, is any, any truth to this? And it was like, you know, I talked to Sean Shelby yesterday, but he didn't mention anything. I'll reach back out. And he's like, are you good with that date? 
Are you good with the timeline? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it works for me. Yeah. Just uh, whatever. Now, obviously, I don't know the ins and outs of contracts for the UFC, but I've heard other fighters talk about it on other – and in the contract, I do think they have to at least offer you X amount of fights per year, typically. Now, they can do it when you're injured or something like that. They're covering their self, but right. they at least have to have offers. So, yeah, that's what I've heard. I've heard they offer you three fights, or they have to offer you, like, three fights a year, whether you say yes or no. Mm-hmm. But they have to offer you. Now, what happens if the UFC just doesn't come and offer you? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the UFC's, they're, no, they're, they're, all... they're their own boss. They do what they want to do. Yeah, you know? I mean, I just figured there at least there's some wording in that contract to at least guarantee that they're going to at least for sure have to offer X amount before the year. supposed over. to be. Yeah. So, April, Minnesota. That will go push for that. <laughs> That's your new call of the week. You know, Vince Purcell. Yeah. Vince Purcell. <laughs> It's a good, it's a good match. He's tough, but uh, not outstanding in any certain yeah. aspect. So he's, he's working a mustache normally right now, yep. isn't he? Yeah, I think he always does that. I don't know if he had it in the Ultimate Fighter house, but I know lately. I he did. <laughs> you know, if you fight him and you don't beat him, and you said he's not outstanding, then that makes you. Then that makes me. I wouldn't be outstanding. That makes you not. Right, outstanding. But that happens. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. But I think I'm dangerous in a lot of areas. More than more than some some fighters. You know, you have to go look at the record and see really, you know, how many wins you got by submission, how many wins you got by knockout, or is all your fights decisions? Mm-hmm. So if you got, you know, if, you, if you're 12 and 3 and you got 10 decision wins, that means you've only finished two of your fights. You know, do I think you're great? You might have a good wrestling background. You might be able to just control the guy, but you're, how much damage are you doing? How, how dominant are you really in these fights? Yeah. So, real quick, we're going to go into the future a little bit here. The future. It's, since this is going to come out after the event tonight anyway, okay. you had your first go at being the Joe Rogan interviewing the fighters. How well did you do on a scale of 1 to 10? <laughs> <laughs> got to give your prediction how well you did tonight. All right. So, I got to look at this here. Man, I'm going to give myself a... Uh, 8.5. 8.5. 8.5. All right. So anyone out here listening who subscribed to our podcast, when you see this, we'll uh, go to the Eminence page, see Kurt's interviewing, and give us your rating of them for sure. The only thing I got to make sure I know these guys' names and how to pronounce the names. That's going to be the only thing. Just say red corner, blue corner. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> with your red corner. <laughs> man, you looked out story. <laughs> outstanding tonight, man. You did a great job. Good submission. Just be like, tell the people your name. <laughs> <laughs> everybody your name what do you want to say to the people it started with your name what was that <laughs> hey that's how you do it well at least you're not doing it out here in like with a bunch of uh dagestans or somewhere where you hey, well, at least you understand at, me anyway. at least we're in alabama so you got yeah. a fair chance to be able to pronounce the names uh, yeah maybe a lot of them might be the same we're all good <laughs> we'll see how it goes <laughs> all right guys anything else y'all want to uh, add on for the episode before we got to pick all the stuff up and get out of jimmy's cage no. Wolf pack in the house. I thought you put the other shirt on. I was like, you can't see the wolf pack shirt, <laughs> but you can. I thought you had the white with uh, the the hollow shirt on. No, it didn't fit. Hey, Blake, give me one. Kurt, give Kurt, me one. Kurt got me. Uh, give me one. No. Yeah, man, give me one. No. Don't, don't leave me hanging. No, you're more of a black and white guy. Come on, man. <laughs> Take that shirt off. You're more of a black and white no. guy. Hey, you know what? Matter of fact, in this cage, I did a I did a grappling match, and I walked out to the wolf pack so. All right, I'll give it to you. Yeah, give me one. This is where, like, the Scott Hall then hits Kevin Nash over the head. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, yeah, Kurt, hit him with the outro. All right, guys, you already know. Like, share, subscribe. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. The Contender and the Pretenders. Go like, share, and subscribe. Check us out. Peace.